Hello. Um, I wanted to make this video here with the permission that Jesus has given me. Um, I'm going to share my testimony. Um, my testimony is pretty long and there's different, um, I would say there's different sections, like different things to focus on when it comes to talking about, you know, my testimony, um, different things. And when I make this video here, I want to focus on one of those things um, to reach out to you guys, and that is hell and my experience with hell that I've seen the place, I almost got swallowed in, I've even been there, um, like different parts of the place or so, almost dropped my phone there, sorry, but um, I just, I wanted to share this with you guys, you know, not to scare anybody or, or to condemn, but the main focus here is to tell you that hell is a literal real place, it's not a place that, oh, it's all fuzzy and and maybe you'll be tired there and um, maybe maybe this maybe that you'll have your own you know false reality of what hell is like oh it'll be like hell if I if I if I can't have TV or if it's the same channel all the time and people have their own like twisted versions of hell they don't realize how terrible it is down there and I'm gonna start off with just telling you um, I would say I, I, I could tell you the first time I saw hell um, it was years ago I moved in with my dad and decided to stay with him you know and this was around middle school um, I decided to stay with him you know for middle school since my parents ended up getting a divorce a long time ago and so I had a dream I was in a large, there was, I was in a place that looked like a large cavern or so, it was very dark, and um, I was floating on top of, I mean, not floating, but like, I, I was on top of a piece that was floating on this like, liquid or whatever, I think it was lava, but I didn't feel any heat, and I was, I was there with somebody, and somebody, and I asked them, is this hell, or so, and they're like, yes it is, we'll never get out, and so on, and I was terrified, and then I woke up. Um, I had this dream, of, of course, because God was knocking at the door of my heart. I mean, all my life I've been a lustful person, you know, looking at things on the internet that are not good to look at, you know, pornography, all these things, and I share this with you guys because Jesus Christ set me free from that. Now, that was the, that was basically, um, the earliest I can remember when seeing anything that comes to hell. Now... I need to explain this next part to you. Um, you know, I, I I need to explain it step by step so it, it can start making sense to you. I grew up in a Catholic. Uh, I mean, I grew up in a Catholic family, but you know, my my parents um, actually became quote unquote they became Christian um, pretty much around the time I was born, maybe a little bit before I was born. So, I was basically born into a quote-unquote Christian family, most likely a, a religious family, but it wasn't Catholic anymore. So, I ended up, you know, growing up, I, I grew up in the church and everything, I was, you know, I did whatever I wanted to do. I was dead in my sins, and I was introduced into pornography later on. Um, long story short, when it comes to that part, you know, um, my mom was like, oh, if you look at that stuff, because I ended up confessing it to her, she's like, if you look at that stuff, you'll end up going to hell forever and ever, and I was terrified. So I went to church, and I was prayed for and everything, and I was still the same. For a long time, I was still the same. Then I finally got plugged into a church. And um, then I was delivered from my sins for a while during a deliverance prayer service or so. And then I went back to the same thing I did before, except that was a little worse than before. Then I went to this thing called an encounter with God or so. And I tell you, I did not encounter God. The only thing I encountered there was just demonic spirits and myself being set free or so. It was, it was crazy. But um, overall, you know, I had to pay to go to it, which was even crazier. But I was desperate. And then <clears throat> after that, I think for about a year or so, maybe two years after that, 
I, I didn't look at pornography. I didn't do any of those things anymore. So I thought to myself in my head, okay, I'm free from pornography. So whatever, I'm good. And I hardly ever read the Bible. I hardly ever prayed. I was just a dead and lukewarm Christian. Then later on, I ended up doing some things that I would rather not mention in this video. You know, things that that brought me back to the way I was. And I became seven times worse, as the Bible says, you know, that the demon spirit leaves you. You leave the house vacant. The You know, you leave yourself empty of everything. You're not even filled with the spirit of God. That demon will come back with seven worse demons and make you seven times worse than you ever were before. This is in the Bible. <clears throat> so, I became seven times worse. I, I stopped caring. And then, this this was crazy. And you can call it crazy, whatever, whatever cases. I think it's crazy. But, you know, I used to be into video games. And I came across a video game called Dante's Inferno. Now, I've played far, far worse games than that. I've seen far worse movies than that in the past and everything. And, and they had little to no effect on me. Maybe I had a nightmare here and there, but then it went away. But it's like, God allowed me to come across that game for a reason. So I played it, and I'm like, oh, this is like, I don't know, God of War or something. And I, I was playing it for a while, and then I just got bored of it, and I sold it. And then, it's like night after night after that, I started seeing terrible, terrible visions of hell. I had dreams. Even during the day, I couldn't close my eyes for five seconds without seeing visions of people burning in the flames of hell. It was that bad. And the thing is, the things I was seeing with my eyes closed were not even in the video game. The video game showed maybe like a small percentage of what hell is really like. And I kept having nightmares, daymares, everywhere I go, I was terrified. I was terrified to even relax or even close my eyes for a little bit and relax and go to sleep. I kept having dreams of seeing people in the flames of hell. I kept seeing bodies that were pierced by these um, by these pointy mountains or so. I, I don't know how to explain it, but they were, they were just hanging there, and it, it was just horrible. You know, people that are alive and they're being tormented, and it, it's just absolutely horrible. Then there was one night I had a dream. I saw on a television screen. It was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen, but. Um, Probably more disturbing than the visions of hell I've seen because um, it, ter it terrified me even more. Um, the dream on the television, I saw a still image. It was a picture of a, of a cartoony drawing. Just a cartoony drawing. It looked like a little five-year-old drew, drew it. S and it looked like stick figures, like little stick figures of demons. Um, that One had a pitchfork and everything. And then one of them was dragging um, a regular um, stick figure guy down this really dark hole and it looked like it was shaded in very dark and the guy looked like he was crying and I heard audibly in this dream it was so clear a person my age and I'm 22 years old I heard somebody my age screaming on the top of his lungs saying kill me kill me kill me kill me and it just it just didn't make any sense to me so when I woke up from the dream God revealed to me this is this is a person He's going to hell. He doesn't realize he's even dead going to hell. He thinks he's still alive. He's asking them to kill him, but then he doesn't realize he's already dead. And he's going to be damned and tortured forever. Meaning, no matter what they do to him, they could rip his body to shreds and he'll be healed instantly. Only to relive the pain. You can imagine, your arm is ripped off by a demon spirit they're laughing at you and all of a sudden your arm just grows back suddenly and they do it again and again and again and again and again and again it just doesn't stop they tear you apart they throw you in the fire and the fire is much worse because it burns up your skin your skin peels off and then it heals again and you're constantly there you never have peace and it's just horrible guys I even had um, visions and dreams later on where I saw a person it was a silhouette of it I didn't even see the actual thing of it 
but I, I saw a silhouette of a person who was just covered with molten liquid and it just showed only his skeleton guys and he was still he was still able to like move around and everything it's it, it, it wasn't enough to even kill him because he's already dead because the soul is eternal no matter what you do to it it cannot die and the soul is you you are there you're literally breathing you're not able to breathe because that place is is full of suffocation you can't even breathe on there what I'm trying to say is you are actually there you feel you hear you see you smell everything it's beyond real guys it's more real than you can ever imagine it's horrible it's unfathomable if you can even think about that then I had um as much as I could remember way later on um I had I was actually in hell again um or actually before I even share this part around a time when I wasn't even delivered again um I had I had a dream where I was in front um of a place and it was like a mouth almost like with teeth and everything it was open I stared in I was very close it was like right there as if I were looking through a window and I saw lava I heard people screaming and I felt the heat I was like oh no 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 I I, I can't go in there I think I heard people screaming. I don't remember. All I remember is the place started shaking, almost swallowed me up. I got out of there on time, and I saw it close, and then it went into the ground. And I thought to myself, if I didn't get out there on, on time, I would have gone down to hell. You know, there was even another time that I even opened up a door in the dream, and I saw, you know, I saw the flames, and there was dark red, really dark, and I heard screams coming from in there. I even had a dream that the pastor that I was following, I heard him screaming on the top of his lungs as if he were being tormented. And God revealed to me after I had that dream that that pastor was going to hell because he wasn't serving Christ. And he had people serve him instead. You know, God used this pastor to deliver me from my sins. Only to later on show me that this pastor wasn't of God. And I left the church. The pastor cursed me and everything. And, you know, I just started following Jesus and he just started, you know, to reveal to me how religious hypocrites are filling these churches, these places and everything. It, it's it's worse so far, far worse than the Pharisees were. At least the Pharisees denied Christ. Nowadays we have pastors claiming to know Jesus and they don't. Jesus says in the Bible, many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, I know you. Lord, you are my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my Master. I did this for you. I cast out demons in your name. I did that. And he's going to say to you, get away from me. I never knew you. You worker of iniquity. You served and followed the devil in your own desires. You did not know me. You did not follow me. You did not obey me. You did what you thought was right. Depart into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels and guys I even had on um, this this dream and I want to share this as well it's as much as I can remember later on you know this was after I've been delivered and everything I started following Christ I had a dream that I was in hell again um but this time you know observing and everything I was there with my clothes on I was in this big old cavern um type place and I saw a girl there she looked like maybe she was 16 years old Anywhere between 16 to 18 years old, God specifically told me it's a 16-year-old girl who's in hell right now, burning. Her entire body from head to toe, she had her clothes on and everything. She was covered in fire, fire that could not be put out. Jesus mentioned three times in a row, I believe it was, in the Bible, in the New Testament, correct me if I'm wrong, in the book of Matthew, where he says, where the fire cannot be quenched. And the worms do not die. There are worms out there too that do not die. And they actually eat your flesh. It's horrible. And this girl was covered with fire. It just would not stop. She she was clawing at her own cheeks. And her... She was screaming on the top of her lungs. Her, her, her jaw was really wide. Like I can see... Physically see how much in pain she was but I could not even fathom or even begin to imagine how much in pain she was and it wouldn't stop 
It just kept happening over and over again. It wouldn't stop. The flames wouldn't stop. She didn't even look like she was even being consumed by the fire. But she felt the heat. And her eyes were like just filled with terror and horror. It was just absolutely, absolutely terrible. And I saw demon spirits They're surrounding her, taunting her. It was like they didn't care. You know, demon spirits hate God. They hate him so much and they hate his creation. They hate you because you were created by God in his image. And they want to form you into the image of the world so that they have every right to take you down to hell in the end to torment you. That's all they want to do. They hate you with such horrible hatred. It's beyond any hatred you can ever imagine. I mean... There was one time I had a dream, and this was, I believe, a week or so ago, that a demon spirit actually grabbed me by the leg and almost dragged me off my bed, but God would not God would not allow it to happen any further. You know, I go to the gym, and I see these big buff guys that look like they're tough, and I'm like, not even that guy, not even the biggest guy in here who's lifting 300-pound weights like it's nothing. Not even he can stand against that demon spirit that grabbed me by the leg that night it's terrible guys you need to wake up you need to come to Jesus Christ or you're gonna end up in hell forever it's it's just a fact you wanna know what the Bible says though a lot of you are like oh it's okay I'm saved by grace and everything but right now this message is to the Christians the professing Christians who already think they're saved because I tell you guys he says, not everybody who calls me Lord will enter my kingdom. They will not enter heaven. Not everybody who calls me Lord. Your professed faith in Christ is nothing. To be honest, it says in the Bible that, oh yeah, it's good that you believe. Even the demons believe. And they tremble before God. Do you even tremble before God? Can I ask you that question? Do you even tremble when you even pray to Him? You're probably like, oh, thank you, Lord, amen, for forgiving me, hallelujah. And then you just go back to the way you were. How many of you are shaking, saying, wow, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry for my sins. Deliver me. And forgive you. His love is so wonderful, guys. You know, the devil, Satan himself, and the demons, they obey God every day. They do whatever he commands them to do and tells them to do. And they do it. And they believe in God. They see him. Satan talks to God before his throne every day. And the demons tremble before God. Even Satan himself trembles before God. And they do whatever God tells them to do. But yet they hate God so much. They hate Him with pure hatred. They don't love Him. In the end, in the Bible it says that Satan will be crushed down and thrown into the lake of fire where he'll never get out again. Yet in the book of Job it talks about how God gave Satan permission to do this and that. Told him to do this and that. Guys, it's good that you believe in God. It's good that you even obey the words of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Maybe you tremble here and there. But where's your love for Jesus Christ? Jesus says in the book of Revelation, It's good that you do this, it's good you do that, but you've forgotten your first love. Are you truly in love with Jesus? I mean, I'm not going to pervert this like a lot of people do. I'm going to tell you the truth. You really love Jesus. If you love him, then you'll stop listening to pastors. You'll stop listening to, you know, other people over him. You'll only listen to him and then he'll say, "Okay, yeah, these people are of me. Whatever they say, yeah, that's of me." But at the same time, he says, "But don't depend on them. I want you to depend on me." Plug into Jesus Christ. Do not plug into the churches. 
you plug it into a church it's like a branch trying to plug into a cut down tree but trying to connect to that tree stub at the bottom the tree stub at the bottom is a pastor and they're connecting it to it but that tree stub is dying and they're all gonna die with it you need to connect to the tree, to the vine Jesus Christ who connects to the tree of life then and only then you will have life I wanted to share these things with you guys and I also wanted to share um, um, my last vision or dream when it comes to hell I saw it this morning um, and I probably I probably will upload a separate video that I made earlier about this but I want to I want to share this since this is in the same video the last dream I had of hell was literally today um, I was literally in this place I, I I didn't feel oh thank you Jesus thank you Lord for helping me remember that one I want to share this one before I share the one that I had today I had a dream one time I think it was months ago or so that I was literally in the lake of fire but I wasn't I wasn't consumed by it I wasn't I didn't feel any heat I was able to breathe and everything I was only there to witness but I was able to float around and everything but I did not feel anything it was like air but I saw these people in the lake of fire they would go all the way to the bottom and they kept swimming back up or so if that makes sense and when they were reach it's like it, while they were inside the lake of fire they were skeletons alive truly they're not alive it's I can't explain it then they would go to the surface and all of a sudden they had their skin again and they would scream help us help us help us and Jesus said this will happen through all, all eternity it's gonna happen forever and ever and they can never get out again and, you know this morning it, it, and even God reveals to me right now it's gonna be far worse than that they probably won't even be able to speak that's how horrible the pain will be but guys and the dream I had this morning too uh, was only 15 minutes I had this dream and it felt longer than that but I was in hell again and I saw in front of me like these pillars like these pointy pillars and they were covered in fire the whole place was covered in fire I mean if you can imagine air being completely replaced with fire that's how can I, I can explain it and I saw these people balancing on those um, those pointy pillars or so and they were black their entire body from head to toe they were naked of course but they were black charcoal black I can hardly see them but I saw them and God revealed to me when I woke up this morning that those were professing Christians who choose to follow and obey their pastor rather than following and obeying Jesus Christ guys you need to wake up you need to come to Jesus because even I, I can't save you your pastor can't save you you cannot save yourself you need to go to Jesus you need to know him I mean how many of you can say I hear the voice of God every day and I do what he tells me to do <sighs> guys you need to come to Jesus and if you're ready, you know, to give your life completely over to Christ, leave the churches and follow him and obey him, to be delivered and filled with his Holy Spirit finally, and being truly born again, because to be honest, I'm, I met a person who said he was born again, and right there, God told me he wasn't. And I saw his fruit. I saw his fruit. It was terrible fruit, bad fruit, fruit of the devil. That's what it was. And I'll explain it to you plainly. Fruit is what comes out of your mouth, what you say, how you say, how you do it, how you act. This person's lusting after women openly. That's bad fruit. He wasn't who he professed to be. So email me. Uh, my email is j.d.1727 at gmail.com. It's j as in John, dot d as in David, dot 17277 at gmail.com. I want you to email me if you're ready to actually, you know, receive some prayer and be emptied from your sins and be filled with the Spirit of God so you can start following Him and obeying Him and doing as He says. And guys, I don't want to be your pastor. I want Jesus to be your pastor. Jesus is my pastor. He teaches me, and I want Him to teach you. 
May the Lord Jesus bless you and guide you.